What's good, everybody? Jersey Boy in the house. We're picking things back up in the draft, and we are looking to hopefully have a good... Uh, I think we might just follow suit with um, how the real draft goes. We'll do rounds two and three today. Uh, hopefully, they don't take too, too long. With that said, though, the Denver Broncos are on the clock. But to catch people up to speed on things, uh, I would recommend checking out the last video that was posted. Uh, actually, it was via stream. This one's going to be done via video. But we picked up in our first pick of this year's draft, Trevor Presley wanted to continue to develop and add significant contributions to the offensive line. And we have done that hidden development. We have some tools that we can work with as he's a bit balanced in both run and pass blocking decent strength and impact to start off with and uh, he seems to have a good head on his shoulders with some solid awareness to start off so we moved up picked him up with the fifth pick I believe and we sat at number 12 we were able to let Cordell Stith fall to us young player we needed at the wide receiver position somebody that can grow within this offense and we found him so he's pretty solid I mean all around no complaints hidden development strong agility good release off the line he has serviceable traits that'll kind of match up with what Sam Darnold can do as well as what uh, his catch radius pretty decent starting off with an 82 uh, catching traffic we need to get the general catching up as well uh, but he's somebody that's going to progress with either Sam Darnold or our future of the franchise is most likely end up moving on 21 year old Kiefer Ellis 6'2 230 pounds great size on him now he is a monster when it comes to physical traits and skills uh, doesn't necessarily look like it in the overall department but hidden development again so we go three for three great speed great agility he can carry he has good break tackle uh, to be so young he can throw under pressure a bit throw the deep and short areas of the field and uh, once we get that throw power up he'll be excellent so we have a great core here as we look to move forward so let's go ahead and dive into it Denver Broncos on the clock they decide they are going to choose the Titans are now on the clock Nathan Landry and by the way taking a look at our draft board and kind of what my expectations are going to be I think we might move some pieces around conduct some more trades but I am expecting um, that I might end up selecting Ashton Callahan he's a great physical um, safety I feel like he might be interchangeable at either position awesome combine young he has the uh, intangibles if you want to call it that we will look for Barry Mills would be another serviceable ba serviceable backup for us he has a uh, decent hit power basically Ashton Callahan uh, but not quite as skilled if you want to call it that even though we don't know what the coverage traits look like he had an excellent combine as well his might even be slightly better although he's a year older so from an age and uh, trait standpoint, Ashton Callahan would be the preference. And then Damon Tiller. So we might double down between the second and third round and uh, basically ensure that we increase our talent in the secondary level. With that said, we have other priorities that come come to play, like adding another young talent since everybody that's on our team is essentially a free agent pickup or an aging veteran that's not going to last. Artist Luther might be that person that can help step in, also 23, and uh, provide some production with us. Solid speed, good strength. He runs all routes on the field pretty well from what I'm able to tell. Um, outside of that, we'll kind of see how the board really falls to us. J.J. Barclay might be a preference for me. He has great size, great speed. He can jump and catching traffic is really what I'm looking for at the moment that way even if we don't get the separation we don't have much struggles uh, with our quarterback being able to put up decent stats but with that said Titans on the, the clock. Steelers are now on the clock and they go with JJ Barclay so like I said 
there's a reason why I'm preferring to wait at some of these positions. Steelers, they picked up a pretty good linebacker in the first round. Let's see what they do for their second pick. The Redskins are now on the clock. And they choose Dwight Lynn. So I was wondering when he would have came off the board. 75 overall. I have to imagine he's hidden development as well. And uh, we might have really overpaid to have to move up. But I wanted my player. And uh, we will be building and catering our offense around what he can do. Especially as he evolves. So I'm not too, too concerned. Although we might have still been able to keep some picks. Redskins on the clock. The Dolphins are now on the clock. Uh, that one stings. Damon Tiller ends up coming off. We take a look at the normal board here. There's still quite a few uh, players, at least at the running back position, uh, that I would imagine would have gotten picked up first. Um, with that said, that leaves us stressed at the cornerback position. It wasn't a great draft for them, even though I couldn't really get into the deeper parts of it since uh, the focus was the top two rounds uh, but Lynn Lockhart is probably going to be the next go-to here if I had to take my next pick probably Malik Phelps just based on them already being a scheme fit we take a look at the breakdown Lynn Lockhart has some speed uh, but he doesn't really have any other standout combine traits 23 doesn't have a phenomenal size but we can make do with it as long as he has the skill and he does with the B coverage, B press, and uh, I can deal with the awareness. Malik Phelps, on the other hand, uh, I could work with the speed. 454, I really would like to see a fub, sub 450, uh, but he can jump and he can press somewhat right away. He's a, a bit taller, a um, bit less heavy though, and he's a year younger, so it's really kind of a, a pick what you think you can mold kind of situation there. We'll see what our ultimate decision ends up being. Or the Buccaneers are now on the clock. Dolphins go running back Mike Walker, and they invested heavily in free agency. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of team they put together once it's all said and done. Buccaneers. The Colts are now on the clock. They go tight end. We have one pick ahead of us is the Colts. Nobody on the clock that I'm dying or nobody on the board that I'm dying to absolutely see. Uh, there, Damon Tiller probably would have been that that immediate go-to. So maybe we do end up going, you know, and art artist Luther. Um, we'll see what happens. Indianapolis Colts choose the Jets are now on the clock. Terrell Dent, and it looks like they have flopped. Um, there is a number of running backs on the board that looked fantastic. Um, J T. Celestin probably one of the top tiers i'm not quite sure why he didn't make it into my draft board must have been a miss uh but the running back position looks really good uh with certain players tyson sampson's kind of my go-to i'm thinking i might be able to get away with a uh a hidden gem there um just because he's a fourth rounder second round talent maybe first uh based on everything i've been seeing he doesn't have the best all-around um combine but the speed you have to love and then the fact that we still get a bit of explosion with the broad and vert jump bench press is serviceable i think we might have something there so it's kind of in between a 59 207 between that elusive and uh like smaller power back kind of build now ashton callahan is still there for us steven acosta um i don't mind him pretty good combine the issue is again age wise we're looking for you know about as young as we can get potentially but i don't see any of the the technical traits there uh, so i'm a bit worried still says he's a one though so i have to imagine he's good now artist luther we know about is potentially going to be where i decide i want to go um taj brown could be one we know what he's working with power moves wise Decent bench press, nice acceleration, pretty good speed, agility should be good, and uh, looks like a potentially good developmental find in the second round, although he probably can make immediate contributions. Maybe we can move him over to the right side to replace Nathan Shepard. We do need outside linebacker talent. 
Uh, we need depth at defensive tackle, even though we got Q holding down the fourth there. And he's someone that also can kind of hold down multiple positions on the line due to his frame. We know we need cornerback assistance still with trying to find young talents to develop there. But uh, I don't know if we're going to find anything else here that we can really go to. So if I have to decide right now, uh, kind of up in the air. Let's take a look at what kind of picks we might be able to recoup. A two and a six this year. That drops us pretty far down. Um, not ecstatic about any of these. It'd be nice to kind of get some picks back for next year after uh, utilizing some of them to move around. But they want us to move pretty far back. The Browns, that's a next year pick. Yeah, so I think we'll go ahead and capitalize on where we're at right now. And with that said, I think I want to trust my board. My instincts tell me we should probably go with Ash and Callahan, get us another weapon back there. If we were to move up, who else could be a pick for us? It'd probably have to be at cornerback. Kelvin Carrington. It's a tough draft between seeing some of these players be older and... Uh, so we could double down. I mean, we could make this, uh, you know, offensive draft, essentially. Kind of use our later picks to make things happen. But uh, I do kind of want to balance things out. Um, it'd be nice if he was a bit on the heavier side. Maybe, you know, 215 or something like that. I wouldn't mind kind of giving them snaps at linebacker as well. I'm kind of torn. So artist Luther... Or do we go Ashton Callahan? I'm willing to move back up if someone slips. Um, and they, you know, seems like somebody I just can't miss on. But uh, Artis really is one of the only other prospects other than Jaden Norman that I'm looking for. And we don't have a third round pick. Marcus Mayett, safety. Jamal Adams holding down the other spot. How much playing time would Ashton Callahan really find? Whereas I'm willing to make some uh, tough calls and get these rookies some playing time. I think we make the pick. We do everything we can to make sure our offense succeeds as the defense has carried us for quite a while now. We make artist Luther that pick, and it looks like we walk away with... The Lions are now on the clock. 68 overall normal development, so we get him 20 slots of where he's uh, slotted true talent-wise. He does have aggressive catch. Catching isn't the best, though. 71, 67 catching traffic. The routes look great, though. The release will need some improvement. I think we can use him as, you know, a fourth or a fifth and uh, let him develop himself over the course of the season. Not quite what I was looking for, but it is what it is. We will make the most of what we've done so far. The 49ers are now on the clock. Lions get Steven Acosta, 72 overall talent on the line, 49ers. The Raiders are now on the clock. JT Celestin, and he does look pretty good. The Bengals are now on the clock. Stuart Sylvester, the DT we're looking for. So it looks like maybe we potentially dodged a bullet. I'm sure he's better than what that overall actually looks like. Um, but I'm glad that uh, if we're going to end up, you know, it wasn't really an option, but let's say we randomly picked him. The Jaguars are now on the clock. We have the player that potentially would be better. Bengals go running back. Jaguars decide. The Packers are now on the clock. Ashton Callahan, 71 overall. Now, who would we potentially move back up to try to make a move for? So 
for one now we need to start really considering packaging our picks or are we going to make sure we kind of do what we need to do um quantity you know quality quantity over quality um tyson sampson is really my preference and then i can work with uh I think at cornerback wise the focus probably needs to be who offers the most traits right away that would be Lynn Lockhart but Malik Phelps is slightly younger mm. Malik Phelps can probably work. Len Lockhart might drop a bit though, so I'm not entirely worried. But uh, I want to go ahead and find out who we're going to target now. That way I know what range I kind of want to shoot for. In this case, we don't really have technically any more true second rounders. So let me take a look at the normal board here. Malik Phelps. Taj Brown. And then we get into the third round. So maybe we don't move. Maybe we, we sit and uh, we wait for that third round to come around. And then we try to secure our running back services uh, for Tyson Sampson here. Yeah, let's see how things shake out. We'll wait till we get closer to like the the twenty pick range, kind of see what's been happening. Packers on the clock. They decide. the Rams are now on the clock. Taj Brown is to go to. So yeah, we're gonna start seeing some of these people come off the board fast. Rams go. The Dolphins are now on the clock. Eddie Goldsberry, not a great tight end draft from what I'd imagine. They always tend to be, you know, top heavy, but uh, maybe somebody finds a gem. Dolphins. The Seahawks are now on the clock. Dalton Pope. I didn't get a chance to really go too deep into the uh, defensive line uh, as it wasn't a main focus for me, but it uh, looks like they, they've been scouting fairly well so far. Seahawks. The Bills are now on the clock. Eric Page, and it looks like the defensive line for this draft was where you could secure some good services. And uh, Bills on the clock, another division rival. Who will they decide to invest in this time? The Mexico City Diablos are now on the clock. John Estes. I think he might have been one of the guards that we had on the board for us. And looks like we have six players currently slotted either for this round or at least above, with uh, Barry Mills being that person. Um, again, this is basically our, you know, Ashton Callahan light, if you will. Uh, slightly better combine year older though not as great you know intangible traits um, that showed up but I'm thinking uh, it's, it's gonna be a combination between Tyson Sampson and then probably either investing in the line again or uh, this is where we'll shoot for like Lynn Lockhart and Malik Phelps so The Texans are now on the clock. Diablos go tight end. Texans. The Ravens are now on the clock. Sheldon Carithers. And that looks like a major miss by the Texans, but you never know. Ravens. The Browns are now on the clock. Malik Phelps off the board. So players flying off of them now. Browns. The Cowboys are now on the clock. Nathan Stevens. Cowboys, America's team. The Giants are now on the clock. Caleb Jensen. And let me see how many running backs we have slated above uh, Tyler Sampson. Quite a few, but he's probably going to be the next best uh, prospect that really should be going. So uh, I need to be cautious of if anybody else comes off before him or if we get too close, even though, you know, we're only getting to the third round. You never know. The Panthers are now on the clock. Giants go Daniel Crick. The Cardinals are now on the clock. Panthers secure a center. The Chiefs are now on the clock. 
Brian Sabre to the Cardinals. Chiefs are going to go. The Patriots are now on the clock. Jason Fort. Jason Fort. Kind of picked my poison at the, the DB position here. Um, so we don't have a whole lot of knowledge on a lot of these players in between. I was kind of willing to go ahead and bet on either securing the services of who I actually wanted or trusting in uh, the combine results a bit, at least for those physical traits. Jabari Bullocks, not what we're looking for uh, necessarily from a scheme perspective or skill wise. I actually don't mind having high zone coverage. It's actually better when it comes to being able to, to make those plays for picks, uh, but I prefer them kind of being able to be a bit more hands on with man coverage. The Bengals are now on the clock. Patriots decide to invest in Marquise Warner at outside linebacker. Bengals. The Bears are now on the clock. Leon Davison, Chicago Bears. The Colts are now on the clock. And Lynn Lockhart goes off the board, so that really only leaves us with the one final remaining player, who is Jabari Bullocks, and uh, might be a person we want to go ahead and jump on. At least we kind of know what we're dealing with here. 455 speed he's able to jump a bit it's not going to be excellent when it comes to his uh acceleration and agility but he is a bit stronger uh, than some of the other cornerbacks we we're able to see don't know if i want to spend picks to really go up and try to find them so maybe uh maybe we hope we can find an undrafted talent with that said though taking a look at our board I guess the next best person to move up for so Alex Kemp could be somebody potentially that gets moved to like a guard position. Um, we do have a few more guards that are here and uh, Roosevelt Millard. It's more of a pass protector though. And then same thing with Kirk Lynn. Levi, Levy, I guess. So, not the best for what we're looking to do. Maybe we go up and get Barry Mills. Correct our uh, our Malahan, Callahan. Uh, I won't call it a mistake, but a uh, decision. I think we'll play this out. We'll let this get to the third round. I mean, we're only, you know, the two picks away. And then uh, I will move up probably around the 10 to 15 pick range to secure our running back services. The Saints are now on the clock. Colts go Marshawn Biggers. The Broncos are now on the clock. Saints in the round with middle linebacker Eddie Simpson as they look to continue to build that defense. Starting all over, Denver Broncos back on the clock. The Titans are now on the clock. They find one in Donovan Gooden. It's hard to find serviceable DTs if you don't get them early on. The Steelers are now on the clock. Zach Palmer to the Titans. Don't know how the rest of the quarterback draft played out, but I have to imagine... Um, you know, odds are, as we've seen them, players, uh, you know, programs aren't willing to build as much around players that aren't drafted high, uh, especially at the quarterback position. So we can only wish good luck to them. Steelers. The Redskins are now on the clock. Barry Mills. And we no longer really have a reason outside of running back to move up and, you know, find anybody decent. So Jabari Bullocks and... Samson are really, uh, they really happen to be our go tos. Why do I feel like I missed him? Tyler Samson. Oh, he's at the top. Okay. So we're going to wait anywhere between the next, like, six to ten picks. Hopefully, nobody grabs them. If so, then we, we really got to scramble after that. Redskins. The Dolphins are now on the clock. Will Durand tight in. They find one that might be able to work for him. 
The Buccaneers are now on the clock. Montrell Gilbert to the Dolphins, and uh, we'll really have to take a look at what they, the other division rivals have done in the offseason as uh, they look like they might be building some monsters for us to compete with, and uh, that's really where it all starts. We want to make sure we can dominate the uh, division opponents, and then we worry about everyone else. The Eagles are now on the clock. And Jabari Bullocks comes off to the Buccaneers, so we are going to have to make the most of what we can do with uh, all of those picks we have to end the draft. Eagles. The Vikings are now on the clock. Damon Beckett. It looks like quarterbacks are starting to come off the board a bit. The Lions are now on the clock. Matthew Mitchell, free safety to the Vikings. Lions. The 49ers are now on the clock. They get Alex Kemp. And uh, we're at the 10th pick. Currently started our draft board with 60 players. I have 15 left. We have no picks this round, which is why we're moving up. And then we have still quite a few uh, between the 4th and the 7th. But uh, how much can we really do with only... 15 draftable players that I've selected left and uh, not a whole lot of scouting in those later rounds. The Giants are now on the clock. 49ers go. Quentin Swift, cornerback, Giants. The Bears are now on the clock. Ramon Walton, Bears decide they will go with. The Buccaneers are now on the clock. Telvin Boone. I want to take a look at the Buccaneers and see... What we could potentially do with them trade-wise. Now, there's not a whole lot I can offer in terms of uh, players for these guys. But, hopefully we can do something with these uh, collection of picks we've been able to stockpile. So, if I give them one of the fourths, give them one of our fifths, would that be enough to get this done? need more value maybe we offer them two of the fives not my preference but okay two sevens next year six two fives a four and then no third rounder one in this first one in the second um so let's do a fourth let's do a which fourth did I give them originally? Let's do the first one that we have. And then uh, do the lower round fifth picks. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a trade. We get it done. Let's secure the services of our running back. Hopefully can help provide a boost to things here. And at this point, we need to secure the players that we are willing to make sure we can make it work with. Tyson Sampson, phenomenal speed, good starting off traits, A minus carrying, A minus ball carry vision, and he has a juke move on him. Middle second round talent. We're picking him up mid third. The Packers are now on the clock. Normal development, but he is 51 true talent. We get him at 77. He has possession catch as a trait. Break tackles pretty bad. Speed, acceleration, okay. High enough agility, he can carry, he can see the lanes, and uh, definitely not any form of a power back, but he does have somewhat of a juke and a spin move. He has a bit of a looseness to him, and uh, he can catch, so we'll see what we can't do. It looks like Deontay Foreman will still be our lead running back, and Tyler Sampson should be able to pick up a good portion of the carries behind him, barring any injury. Now, with that said, uh, at this point, pretty much secured the services I think most of the people will be able to uh, work with. Noah Chatham is going to be the next player that I'd like to try to secure the services of. Uh, I feel like he has great physical build, 6'5", 323. He's a scheme fit. He's working the run block angle that we're looking for. We can get him in the fourth. Oh, we're missing our, our pick that's a little bit earlier, but I think we can make it work. I think we can make it work. 
Otherwise, yeah, everybody else is pass protectors, but I was willing to take a look at the skill set that they had. Uh, the only other person I'd be really interested in at the moment would be Jamal Underwood. Um, decent trades coming in as a run stopper. It's basically all we really need in terms of uh, somebody in the middle um, and some coverage traits. But we'll see if we can make any other moves. Packers on the clock. The Rams are now on the clock. Free safety, William Wagner, Rams. The Falcons are now on the clock. And they grab Underwood so we can forget those pipe dreams. The Seahawks are now on the clock. Our other wide receiver, Jaden Norman, goes to the Falcons as they look to continue to replace those pieces they've lost, such as Julio Jones and them that I'm sure will be gone. The Bills are now on the clock. Jed Fox to the Seahawks, Bills. The Mexico City Diablos are now Michael on the clock. Michael Aldrich, left outside linebacker. I don't think the Bills have fared as well as uh, the Dolphins have. Patriots looks like they're doing okay. And then I definitely believe our class is phenomenal as well, at least for the first round that we were able to nail. Of course, we did get three first-round picks after doing some maneuvering. Guards, 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 guards. Nobody else but you. I got a feeling we are going to need to move up once again. Let's see if we can wait till maybe uh, the Giants pick. The Texans are now on the clock. Ibrahim Burton. The Ravens are now on the clock. Texans go tight end. Ravens. The Browns are now on the clock. Daniel Green. That's the second or third tight end to come off. I am getting a bit nervous two three four five six there are six other tight ends but he's the last guard I'm gonna try to hold out hope and hope we can get to the Giants without you know somebody <sighs> jumping ahead of us we'll see what happens Browns the Cowboys are now on the clock. They go quarterback and a huge miss. Allen Cassidy. I wonder what they might have seen in him. Even if he can develop into a backup, I'm sure he is quite a while away from that. America's team. The Giants are now on the clock. They go Kirkland Levy, and I think we need to go ahead and try to pull the plug here once again. So let's see what we can't do with our intra-city rivals. Giants, I'm going to need you to work with us. See if we can't get the third pick from you. And I will provide you with another fifth. We'll give you our bottom sixes. Ah, it's not quite enough. I, ah, man, I really don't want to uh, lose that fourth. I guess there's nothing else for us really to absolutely need it for, but um, that would just be quite a pain. All right, so let's include the fourth. Let's do a fifth, and we'll give them one of the sixes. We'll see if this gets it done. If not, then uh, I have to consider if I want to add that extra fifth. How come nobody's at the podium? That's because both teams are right now working on a trade. We get it done. Let's go get our guard. Continue our investment in this offensive line. Nobody can say we're not trying to set our offense up to succeed after the first two drafts that we've been able to complete for this team. Noah Chatham, welcome to the New York Jets. The Panthers are now on the clock. Hidden development. Excellent. 73 true talent. 98 uh, excuse me 88 is where we get him at slightly under he only starts off as a 66 strength isn't the best run blocking is lovely though uh, we need to work on the impact get that awareness up so he, he definitely has some development that he's going to have to go through but uh, I don't think he needs to start right away as we'll le let him stay behind white side um, so at this point right guard is essentially the only piece that we're really missing at least for starters as uh, we continue to try to build depth around it. But I think that might end up concluding uh, what we end up making for moves here. Unless, you know, we make some changes between the fifth through seventh rounds. 
So let's go ahead and finish things out. Carolina Panthers. The Cardinals are now on the clock. Von Wallace, right tackle. The Texans are now on the clock. Cardinals go Jamil Slate, running back Texans. The Patriots are now on the clock. Kenya Johnson, they go DB, cornerback. The Bengals are now on the clock. Patriots get Jacoby Washington, Bengals. The Bears are now on the clock. They select Kelvinton Carrington, which was uh, one of the best outside linebackers left, at least that I can see from my board here. And uh, there's really nothing else for us to pursue. So the rest of this is kind of a free-for-all based on either combine traits or the few other players I've seen that I just didn't want to put on the board and uh, whatever traits we might have been able to see from them. The Colts are now on the clock. Bears go center. Colts. The Saints are now on the clock. Roosevelt Miller doesn't look half bad, 6'9 overall. He was uh, more of a pass blocker. And the Saints to end the round decide to go with... The Broncos are now on the clock. Running back Cameron Tripp, 60 overall. This is where the rest of the draft and uh, how well scouting went for people is really going to come into play, as they say, right? Build your team through the fourth and seventh round. So let's go ahead and take a look at who's... we cool services we've been able to secure uh, that hopefully will help lead us into a brighter future for the Jets. We get Cordell Stiff, Trevor Presley, Kiefer Ellis. I'm going to go ahead and dub him quarterback of the future even if Sam Darnold ends up being the go-to now. Artis Luther, another wide receiver that we hope maybe we can develop in a uh, utilize him alongside with the talent we have Tyson Sampson maybe the running back of the future I'm not sure how that'll play out I'm surprised he really only had 92 speed though out of at a you know 438 uh, and then Noah Chatham hopefully he develops into a starter by end of season if not then I'm definitely confident by the following season he should be good so we'll sit him beside uh, behind Whiteside in the meantime let him continue to get as much of that boost from the hidden development as possible before we find out what he's actually uh, traded for. And then we might move him to the right or we might let him go ahead and see if he can beat out Whiteside next time. Maybe we let him take his spot and move Whiteside over to right guard. But I think we've done well for ourselves. Six picks so far. We still got a bevy of picks to go. We started out with 15 for the draft. Played six, selected six players, and uh, we still got seven to go. So, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the last three rounds, and uh, I'm looking forward to preseason for sure, as we got quite a few battles uh, in camp that are going to be going on. With that said, though, 